everyone! Today we're going to be making a plant life cycle picture. This is one that I like doing in the springtime when our plants are coming up as well. So we're going to be dividing our paper into four because we're going to be showing the four, four different stages of our plant's life cycle. The first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my paper in half like I'm making a card. I use the table to help me quite a bit, but I'm going to line up my edges. Then I hold it down with one hand. So I'm holding down these edges so that they're not going to wiggle. I pull from here and then I go down to the bottom and up to the top. So now I have a fairly nice crease and I can tighten that up with my fingers if I need to. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but now it's like I've folded my paper to make a card. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this folded in half and I'm going to fold it one more time. So again, I'm going to line up my edges as best I can. If it's not absolutely perfect, that's okay. It's more do the best that you can. Any practice folding is a good practice to have. Then I kind of press this down. Okay, so I always hold the edge where it opens down to the table or whatever surface you're using so that it will stay put a little bit more. So now if you look at my paper, I have four columns coming down my paper. Now is when we're going to start doing our drawing and we're going to work through this step by step. The first line I'm going to make is actually going to be a ground line. You want your ground line to not be super low because we have to draw stuff below the ground and above the ground but not quite halfway. I'm estimating halfway to be right about here, so I'm gonna make it just slightly lower than halfway up my paper. And I am gonna draw just kind of a line. Doesn't need to be super wiggly, but it also does not need to be straight because the ground is not perfectly flat. So I like that line, I think it looks good. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be making this plant coming from a seed. So in each section under the ground, there's going to be a little seed. So I end up drawing my seeds almost like a little football shape. Or like a little bean below the ground. You would probably want to use a pencil to do your drawing. I am using a marker so that you can see it against my paper a lot easier. So, and again, mine starts slanting up a little bit. Again, it's okay if it's not perfect. So I have my four seeds. Now, this one, we're gonna say has just been planted. So it hasn't started growing anything yet. Our second one, so if we're going one, two, three, four, our second one was planted a little while ago. So, meaning a few days. Um, and so we're gonna say that this little one has started growing a little bit, but we can't see it above the ground yet. So we're kind of like we've sliced into the ground and we're looking at it from the side. So I'm gonna make just a little sprout coming out of that seed and that seed would have started developing just some tendrils for roots coming out so just barely starting to grow seed number three has managed to push itself up above the ground And you can make it curled like a spiral if it's if that makes you happy. If you just want to make it the way that I am, which is going to be a little bit simpler. So it's just a little sprout. That's fine too. And the roots, it is developing roots that are a little bit thicker. 
So I'm adding some thickness there and they're just becoming a bit more substantial. Roots are really important for all plants. That is what helps get nutrients and water into the plant. They absorb it through the soil and it also helps support the plant. So if they're all just going straight down, that plant, if we went to pull it up, that plant would just pop right out. So a lot of times these would come out to the side as well to really support that plant so that if it was a windy day, it's not gonna flop over as well. It's not gonna get pulled up as well if it's a small plant. So you wanna make sure that you have some coming out to the side. Now, this one we're gonna say is all grown up. And this is where you can make a choice on what you want your grown up plant to be. If you would like your grown up plant to turn into a big old apple tree, then draw a big old apple tree. If you want it to be a beautiful flower or a strawberry bush or anything that frankly would have grown from a seed, you can draw that on your own, okay? I am going to keep mine fairly simple. If you are an older student and you're still watching this, I am going to expect to see a bit more detail in your work compared to what I am drawing. So I'm going to make the roots first. And again, they should come out to the side and there should be more of them because that's really helping support that plant and maybe there's some more here okay so we're saying that this plant is doing really well and again if this was a real plant it would have a lot more roots than this and they would be going wider and deeper but for our art project this is absolutely fine we're getting the idea that we understand how a plant would be growing and then this one i think i am gonna make him a flower So I'm going to draw the flower part first, and then I'm going to draw the stem coming down. Okay, so here's my flower. And the stem is not just going to be a single line. We haven't drawn anything that's just a line coming up. We've always drawn it as a shape because we want to be able to color it in. And so here is my stem coming up and out. Maybe I'll add a little leaf. So now we have our plant growing up. What we are also going to add is things that a plant would need to be able to grow. So we already have our soil. Down below here is our soil. Up here in one of these sections, not in each one, we are going to need to add a sun and some way that our plant is getting water our sun so we're looking really closely to the ground so our sun should not be huge in a corner because it's way far away so i might honestly draw my sun really small just like that if you feel like adding the lines around your sun you are welcome to in real life However, if you look up, and I don't recommend it, but there's not actually lines coming from the sun. You can just leave it as a circle, and that's absolutely fine. Okay, and then I am going to say over here, and this is something I like doing it this way. And if you just want to draw a cloud with some raindrops coming down, that's absolutely a way that 
our plants can get water. Sometimes, though, I like making it look like there is a watering can coming from the side of the picture. And so we would make the holes. And then I would draw some nice droplets of water. Showing I'm watering the plant. And again, if you want to draw, maybe a hose is coming across and you're watering your plants with a hose. Maybe you are... Maybe it's raining, so there's a cloud up in here and some rain coming down. Again, you don't need to make the water droplets fill the whole space of the paper. We're just showing, hey, this is something that our plants need to be able to grow. The soil is something that our plants need to be able to grow, and they also need the sunlight to be able to grow. So we're really trying to show, hey, I understand how this is all working. If we were in class together, what I would ask you to do is you would color in your plant with marker and then your background would be crayon. So your watering can, your sky, your sun, and the soil would all be done with crayon. If you do not have access to both of those art materials, that's absolutely fine do the whole thing with what you have. Um, honestly, I don't have regular markers at home, but just to show you what it could look like, I am going to use my colored Sharpies to color in the plant. And part of the reason that we're using two different materials on this assignment, if it's possible, is that we want to put emphasis, so we want it to stand out, on our plant and kind of that life cycle process that we are doing. So we want to say, hey, this is the important part, is the plant growing? And then the crayons would be kind of a softer color, so they wouldn't cover over this nearly as much, so our plant would really pop out compared to everything else. So I am going to continue to color and you will see it in just a minute when I'm all done. All right, now I have finished my plant life cycle picture and I have my seeds and how they are growing up to above the soil. I've included a watering can to show, hey, plants need water, a little sun far, far away to show that plants need the sun and my sky is all nicely colored. Something for my younger students, um, a lot of times I'm seeing just blue colored in a stripe across the top. But if you look outside, that blue sky comes all the way down and to whatever it touches. So if you were in a big field filled with flowers, far, far away, that blue sky is, gonna, is going to come all the way down. I absolutely promise. So. I'd like to see you coloring that sky all the way down to the ground really carefully. I did not color over or into my flower or my little sprout, my sun or my watering can. I did color over my water droplets because water is actually clear. So it's okay that they are essentially the same color as the sky. They normally reflect or you can see through them. So as long as they still show up, 
if when you color your sky they don't really show up anymore go over them again um that's why mine show up because i used a permanent marker but if you just trace over them again with pencil or whatever you have that will help them continue to show up um as long as you haven't really pressed hard in your background so and again underneath in the soil i did not color over my seeds or the stem of my plant coming up so i'm really coloring around those objects carefully to show that I'm demonstrating craftsmanship with my work, which is putting in effort and making it look really nice and neat. I hope you enjoyed following along and integrating just a little bit of science with our art project today. I can't wait to see what you've made.